Thomas Buick's Apprenticeship. In 1767, the Newcastle engravers William and Rafe Bealby visited Thomas Buick after Thomas's godmother, a Mrs. Simmons of Bywell, had given them a flattering account of his skills in drawing. Buick was apprenticed for a fee of 20 guineas to Rafe Bealby, at that time the sole general engraver in the town. The apprenticeship was for seven years, the apprentice only receiving wages for only the last three years. Leaving the countryside to lodge with Bealby was a severe wrench. In his memoir, Buick recalls, To part from the country and to leave all its beauties behind me, with which I had all my life been charmed in an extreme degree and in a way I cannot describe. I can only say my heart was like the brick. In 1760s, Newcastle had less than 25,000 people. There were town walls and gate houses. The West Gate, at the junction of Westgate Road and Cross Street, had large oak gates and iron doors, and was described by the antiquary John Leyland as a mighty strong thing. When Buick first arrived in Newcastle in 1767 to begin his apprenticeship, he would have entered the town by the West Gate. As an apprentice, Thomas had to promise not to swear or gamble, fight or betray trade secrets. His promise was not kept for long, as Bealby's wild lad, as Buick became known, got involved in a fight on the quayside near Sand Hill, shortly after his apprenticeship had started. Here I fell in with bad company, consisting of three low blackguard prentice lads from the close. I endeavoured to shun their company, but they seeing me, in a strange and perhaps somewhat clownish dress, followed and insulted me, till I couldn't bear it any longer, when turning upon one of the sauciest of them, I presently levelled him, and was about serving the second in the same way, when the all three fell upon me and showed no mercy. When apprenticed, after initially staying with his master Bealby, Buick went to lodge with his aunt Blackett and pudding chair. When the time arrived that I was to cater for myself, I went to lodge with my aunt Blackett in the pudding chair, and she, being a freeman's widow, kept cows upon the moor and I was abundantly supplied with milk, which was the chief thing I lived upon. Thomas would grow to be six foot tall, broad and muscled. I carried no useless weight of fat about me, and the muscular parts of me were as hard as it was possible, possible to be in any human.